Well, well, well. Look who it is. If it's not my favorite informal Algebra 1 class. You guys. Uh, yeah, I guess I like all of you. All right, listen. We're going to do some of these problems together. Kind of get you going on the right foot. And then the rest of the time, you got to get that practice in yourself. Remember, you're only going to improve your skills if you actually practice, not just if you copy the key or off your buddy. And you'll also notice we're showing all of our work when we're doing it together. All right, so why don't you guys flip over to the back. We're going to do the last two rows together, 23 to 27, 28, something like that. So if you look at Let's actually start with 25, because adding and subtracting fractions was the first thing that we covered. Remember, when you're adding or subtracting, you have to have a common denominator. It doesn't matter when you're multiplying or dividing, but adding and subtracting has to be the same denominator. So if I'm looking at 25, I see a denominator thirds and eighths. So we're trying to think in our heads, what's a number that 3 and 8 can all go into? 24, okay, so we can make them all 20 fourths. However, if we add from left to right, you might notice these first two fractions have the exact same denominator. They're both thirds. So maybe let's just kind of see where we're at with that. If I did eight and two thirds plus one and one third, well, eight plus one is nine. Two thirds plus one third would be three thirds. So we'd have 9 and 3 thirds minus 6 and 5 eighths. We could still get them a common denominator. You might notice 9 and 3 thirds is really 10, right? So if it helps, you could rewrite that. 10 minus 6 and 5 eighths. But we're doing subtraction here. We're going to need to have the same denominator. So I would say having 10 as 9 and 3 thirds is kind of nice because it's like nine plus another whole, but we're dealing with eighths. So maybe let's make this nine and eight eighths, right? That's equivalent with 10, and that'll allow us to do this subtraction. So we have nine and eight eighths minus six and five eighths. Now it's all eighths, baby. So we'll subtract the big guys. Nine minus six is three. Eight eighths minus five eighths would be three eighths. You double check, can you simplify that? Nothing goes into three and eight, so we're all good. That's our final answer there. And that was a brutal problem. So if you were following along with that, man, you're good. <laughs> you are good. All right, 23, multiplying and dividing. Actually, my favorite thing to do with fractions because you do not need a common denominator when you're multiplying or dividing, but you do need to get them all into improper fractions first in order to do that. So on number 23, we start in the denominator. 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 1 would give us 7 thirds times 4. We're doing fractions here. 4 is a fraction. It's just kind of invisible. 4 is really 4 over 1 times, and then we have the 1 and 7 eighths. We start in the denominator, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 7 would be 15 eighths. You could just multiply across the numerators and across the denominators, but boy oh boy, would I recommend reducing now if you can. You're just dealing with smaller numbers then. So do you see anything from any numerator and any denominator that we can simplify? And you might be like, 4 and 8. 4 goes into both of those. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 8 two times. That's cool. Does anything else jump out at you? Maybe you're thinking 3 and 15. That's true. 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 15 five times. So up in the numerator right now, I have 7 times 1 times 5. In the denominator, I have 1 times 1 times 2. So basically, we're just looking at the 2. Can I simplify the 2 with anything? And I can't. So we can just go ahead and multiply now. 7 times 1 is 7, times 5 is 35. 1 times 1 times 2 is just 2. 
35 over 2. How many 2's can I evenly get into 35? And you might be like, all right, well, I know 2 times 18 is 36. 2 times 17 is 34. So 17, and remember, we're doing like the 35 there, minus 2 times 17 is 34. So 35 minus 34 would leave us with one left over. So our final answer there is 17 and a half. Brutal. That was a doozy. Number 24. We've got division, we've got multiplication. Regardless, we're going to need them as improper fractions. So I start in the denominator. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So we have 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 4 times 2 over 5. Now remember when you have division of fractions, it's the old keep, change, flip. So we're going to keep the first fraction, 3 over 2. We're going to change the division to multiplication. We flip the second fraction, just the fraction right after the division, 4 over 3. You make it the reciprocal. And then we still have the times 2 over 5. So now it is a multiplication problem. Do you notice anything that we can simplify? And you're looking at that and you're like, yeah, dude. I see a 2 and a 2. Get rid of them. Cancel out a 2 for a 2. Anything else like that you see? I see a 3 and a 3. 4 and 5, do they have anything in common? No. So we just have 4 fifths. That wasn't too bad. I thought number 23 was way worse than that. All right, so we got 3 done. Let's keep this party moving. Look at that next row, though. Woo! Wowza. 26 has addition and subtraction. We're going to need that common denominator. I don't even see any that already have a common denominator. So we're going to have to figure out something that 3, 9, and 2 all go into. Luckily, 3 goes into 9. So we can kind of just think about 9 and 2. And you could always just multiply them. If you want, you can multiply all three of those. 3 times 9 is 27, times 2 is 54. But since 3 goes into 9, 9 times 2 is 18. So we can make them all 18. So let's try that. So this 11 and 1 third, here, I'm going to make my kind of skeleton here. So they're all going to be 18ths. So we look at the first fraction, 1 third. 3 times what would give us 18? It's times 6. So we'd have to multiply the numerator by 6 as well, which would give us 11 and 6 eighteenths. We look at the next one, 8 and 8 ninths. Okay, well 9 times 2 is 18. So if we multiply the numerator by 2, that would be 16 eighteenths. And the last one, 7 and a half. 2 times 9 gives us 18. So 1 times 9 would give us 9 eighteenths. Now addition and subtraction, you always go left to right. So we're doing 11 and 6 eighteenths minus 8 and 16 eighteenths. Now you'll notice we don't have enough eighteenths to make that happen. So what we've done in the past is we borrowed a whole from this 11. We bumped it down to 10. And that whole, that 18 out of 18, goes in the numerator. So it's kind of like we're adding 18 to that 6, so you have 10 and 24 eighteenths. You would never leave that as your final answer. That's goofy, but that'll allow us with that regrouping to do this subtraction now. So now we can do 10 minus 8 is 2, 24 eighteenths minus 16 eighteenths would leave us with 8 eighteenths. So we have 2 and 8 eighteenths plus 7 and 9 eighteenths. Okay, we can add the 2 plus 7 is 9. 8 eighteenths plus 9 eighteenths would be 17 eighteenths. You check if you can simplify it anymore. You cannot. So that would be our final answer. I'm feeling wild, and I'm going to leave 27 for you guys to do, because I, be I believe you can do it. You're very smart when you try. 
We are going to do number 28. If you look, we have 4 and 2 thirds divided by 3 fifths times 6. We got multiplication, we've got division, we're going to have to go improper fractions. So 4 and 2 thirds, we're going to do 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 would be 14. So we have 14 thirds divided by, and then in parentheses here we have 3 fifths times 6. 6, if it was a fraction, would be 6 over 1. Okay? your order of operations would say that you do the parentheses first. So 14 thirds divided by, and 3 fifths times 6 over 1, nothing will simplify, so we could go ahead and multiply. 3 times 6 is 18, 5 times 1 is 5, 14 over 3 divided by 18 over 5, and then we do the old keep change flip. Keep that 14 thirds, we're going to change it to multiplication, and we use the reciprocal here, 5 over 18. Now maybe we'll be able to simplify some stuff. 14 and 18 are both even numbers. 2 goes into every even number, so we can cut them in half. Half of 14 is 7, half of 18 is 9. So now 7 doesn't have anything in common with 3 or 9, and neither does 5. So now we can go ahead and multiply. 7 times 5 is 35, 3 times 9 is 27, that's over 1, right? Thir the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So that would be 1, because 27 goes in there once. And how many leftovers would there be? If we took away 27 from 35, that would leave us with 8 27ths remaining. It can't simplify 8 27ths, so 1 and 8 27ths. Guys, we've done it. We've done five of the most difficult problems in the history of man. I'm pretty sure. So you got 23 more, but you got plenty of time to do it. So don't waste your time. Be good. And then, uh, you know, maybe some plant dollars will come your way if you get this all done.